Hey everybody, just wanted to take a couple minutes and show you uh, how our system goes together. This is the Viper EVT system. There's a couple different uh, varieties that I want to show you today, but mostly just to give you some information about how things look coming out of the crate. So you'll get the system, it'll look like this, basically. Uh, it will not be on casters just yet, you'll have to do that, but this is the system itself, there's a structure, there's a mount for the computer up here, a mount for the camera. Um, and so I'm just gonna push this off to the side. We've got our other system set up here. So as you get that system, you'll have a box that comes with it. There's a series of casters in there with some screws to put those in. Make sure you put those in. If you want to have that accessibility, that is an option for you. Um, there is a, uh, a wireless keyboard and mouse for initial setup if you need to do some things to it. It should be ready to go out of the box, plug and play, but this is in there for making any configuration. It makes it a lot easier than having to get into the system itself. Uh, obviously, the camera itself, this is we're using the FLIR A65 for this camera setup, but um, it's a variety. We'll go through the different variety of cameras you can use there as well. And then also a reflector. So this reflector is used, you put it against the wall, and that enables the proximity sensor uh, to start the process. We will be switching over to using a visible camera. So some of you may not get this, which is great. That means that everything else is built in for the facial recognition. The last component is the um, reference emitter. The reference emitter is just a simple black box. We have it on an optional stand, or you can mount it on the wall. Uh, there's a simple twist connector. So basically you get a, a section of um, wire that comes with it with a quick connector on it. You plug it in and you let everything go there. We would advise, as with any thermal imaging system, that you wait 30 minutes before uh, doing any analysis once they start up. And so then it's simply a matter of going through the process of everything set up, ready to go, and you'll get the good uh, signal, go and no go, uh, based on the uh, measurement or reading that you're getting in the field of view. We'll take a couple more uh, videos and show you what's actually going on in the software. That's the physical setup of the system. Again, the computer and monitor are in a separate box. They simply hook onto the Visa mount of the system itself, you put the camera on and everything else is ready to go. Thanks, hope that's helpful. Just the connection on the back of this uh, computer. So the computer and monitor come together as one. All you have to do is loosen these two screws, slides right into there and locks into place. So then once you have that, your visa mount's good to go. The same with the uh, camera itself. It's gonna hook up uh, ethernet there and then it screws onto this adjustable um, mount. For the reference emitter, this is the reference emitter cord that comes out. Uh, that will end up coming out of the bottom down there. So it'll just be a quick connector. And then you have this plug that goes in straight to here. So it's a nice and easy connection. You shouldn't have to open this at all. All this is physically doing is warming up that box to give you a, a reference, a known reference, so that when you look in your field of view, you have a, a spot here. So what we're gonna do is you're gonna actually gonna move and you're gonna put the smaller box here on top of this box so it's always in the field of view. I'm gonna take a quick second to just show you guys how to set everything up when it comes out of the box. You turn on the computer, which is on the back of the uh, monitor itself. You double click the Viper Vision icon. It'll come up um, into a preset configuration that we've put in there for you, which should take care of everything straight out of the box. Uh, if you have an optional light tower and um, uh, alarm, it will go off immediately when you first start. Sorry about that. And then everything comes in. Um, so the first thing you'll notice is that uh, I can move my mouse anywhere on the field on the screen and it'll tell me the temperature. Obviously I'm not 106 degrees. We wanted to show you that on purpose. Um, but uh, as we do that, um, you notice I cannot click on anything. So we have to log in. So you would log in with the credentials that you're given. Make sure. It's almost as if I did this on purpose, that your caps lock button is not on. Okay, once you log in, now I can move some things around. You'll notice if I click on the screen, I can use this button. That'll allow me to move these boxes and resize the boxes however I want to. You also notice that I have in the field of view a reference emitter. So what we want to do is we want to move this spot over there. This is going to help us compensate for any changes that might be going on in the field of view or drift in the camera. Now we did just crank this camera up. So 
initially uh, you need to wait 30 minutes before you do anything. But I wanted to show you just how important that is. You'll notice my temperature dropped down to 96. Once this camera gets going, is uh, running about 30 minutes or so, uh, everything should be back and equilibrated to uh, a more accurate body temperature. But uh, this just shows the power of that reference emitter. Even when it comes right out of the box, it's gonna pull that calibration back into where it needs to be. So everything should be set up uh, and good to go. So if you have that, you've done everything, just to give you an idea, we'll show you. Um, how the uh, the process goes. So I've started the initial uh, alarming sequence. It goes through, processes, gives me a green light. Everything's good to go. You should be able to run like that with no problem. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call.